Hello, my friend. Welcome back. Please take a seat, take a drink, and let me tell you the tale of the flying head. The Iroquois nation boasts a tapestry of ancient lore woven meticulously through generations via oral tradition. Within this vibrant tapestry lie tales brimming with morals and a fervent desire to preserve the Iroquois culture. However, amidst this mosaic of purposeful narratives, the enigmatic legend of the flying head emerges, shrouded in ambiguity. In its malevolent apparitions, this spectral fiend targets the Iroquois people without discernible cause or motive. Countless stories recount the presence of the flying head, or even multiple iterations of the same scattered throughout the annals of Iroquois legend. These tales come in various renditions, each presenting a unique perspective. In the ensuing discourse, we shall explore the common traits that define the flying head in these chronicles, delve into select legends that involve this monstrous entity, and endeavour to trace the origins of this captivating myth. What then is the nature of the flying head? Primarily, it is a disembodied head endowed with the ability to take flight. However, unlike the ethereal Krasu of Southeast Asia, the flying head of Iroquois folklore boasts not mere levitation, but rather colossal wings sprouting from its very cheeks. Some versions liken these appendages to those of a bat, while others attribute a more avian semblance. Additionally, rumours persist of talons adorning the creature's form, enabling it to perch upon trees and snatch its hapless prey. Adding to its disquieting allure, the flying head is reputably four times the size of an ordinary human, a gargantuan spectacle to behold. Its visage is obscured by a thick mane of jet black hair, and within its maw lie rows of razor-sharp fangs. These monsters are said to harbour an insatiable hunger, seeking living beings as sustenance. They take to the skies, scouring the land for their next victim, be it canine, bovine or human. Formidable and fierce as these entities may be, they possess the uncanny ability to vanish as swiftly as they appear. One moment they lay siege to an entire Iroquois village, only to dissipate into thin air the next. Pinpointing the precise origins of such legends often proves elusive. However, in the case of the Flying Head, Iroquois historians possess a measure of certainty, asserting that the first recorded sighting took place upon a hill at the edge of Great Sacandaga Lake in New York, in the very vicinity where the current Hamilton County government buildings stand today. Legends recount that an unnamed tribe inhabited this land for countless generations, utilising its bountiful offerings for sustenance and employing its strategic location to hunt, for they could patiently await the arrival of sizeable games seeking respite near the lake's shores. Alas, fate took a bitter turn when the flying head emerged, wreaking havoc upon the tribe with unparalleled ferocity, forcing them to flee their ancestral domain abandoning their cherished home. News of this calamity reverberated across neighbouring tribes, instilling trepidation and dissuading all from venturing into this accursed territory until the advent of European settlers. Even though civilization has since taken root in this land, echoes of ancestral beliefs continue to resonate within those of Iroquois descent, who harbour a lingering conviction that a cursed pall still veils the region. Indeed, certain Hamilton County historians recount a curious tale. Three distinct hotels were erected upon the site, only to meet abrupt and inexplicable ends, consumed by fiery conflagrations. The veracity of this account remains uncertain, yet it undoubtedly contributes to the mystique surrounding the flying head. While the previous chronicle unveils the earliest sighting of the flying head, it fails to illuminate the creature's genesis. Fortunately, other Iroquois tales weave the very fabric of its creation. In this variant, a tribe dwelling in what is now modern-day New York faced a dire famine. The young men of the tribe yearning for green pastures advocated relocation to more fertile lands. 
The elder members, resolute in their attachment to their native soil, adamantly refused to abandon their cherished home, asserting a willingness to perish rather than forsake their ancestral domain. Enraged by their response, the young men perpetrated a gruesome act, slaying their forebears. Yet the matter of disposing of the lifeless remains presenting a grave quandary. In a misguided attempt to sanctify their actions and offer penance to the master of life, their supreme deity, the young men decapitated the elders, consigning their bodies to flames, while consigning the severed heads to the murky depths of a nearby lake. According to certain renditions, the heads were interlinked with a rope which tragically claimed the lives of several young men as they attempted to submerge them. After this burial, the surface of the water rippled with disturbance as a vile mucus began to accumulate. From this unclean residue, a colossal flying head emerged, venting its fury upon the tribe. Ever since, the denizens of these lands have borne the brunt of those young men's transgressions as the flying head continues to terrorise the innocent. A particular narrative involving the flying head centres around a woman who, through cunning stratagem, manages to banish the beast from her tribe forever. As the tale unfolds, the woman's village endures years of unwelcome visits from the flying head, haunting their dwellings like a recurring nightmare. One faithful evening, the creature manifests at the woman's lodge, driven by an insatiable hunger. Serene and undisturbed, the woman remained seated by the hearth, steadfastly averting her gaze from the monstrous presence looming at her door. Yet she is keenly aware of its presence, quietly devising a plan to rid her people of this blight. Positioned before the fire, she surreptitiously heats rocks until they glow incandescently. Employing a forked stick, she dexterously conveys the heated stones towards her mouth, simulating the act of consumption. The flying head, deceived by this ruse, perceives the woman to be indulging in roasted acorns, oblivious to her true intentions. In one rendition, the flying head, succumbing to its ravenous instincts, enters the lodge and pilfers the woman's simulated meal. Unbeknownst to it, the creature inadvertently ingests a mouthful of scorching hot stones. Wrapped by searing agony, it thrashes its wings in frenzied desperation before vanishing into the nocturnal abyss, its anguished screams reverberating through the darkness. Alternatively, another version portrays a flying head, perched at the threshold, beholding the woman's actions. Its eyes, witness to her consumption of heated stones, transform from malicious intent to a mixture of awe and terror. The creature recoils in the face of the woman's extraordinary power. From that moment onward, the flying head flees from the village, perpetually haunted by the indomitable presence of this remarkable woman. Certainly, the stories recounted herein represent a mere fraction of the extensive Iroquois oral tradition entailing the exploits of the flying head. Other tales paint the flying head as a devourer of wayward boys who dare venture into the night, or as a formidable adversary to be confronted by valiant warriors in battle. As to the true meaning behind the enigma of the flying head, it remains veiled in uncertainty. Regardless, these narratives offer a captivating glimpse into the profound world view of the Iroquois people. And so ends my tale of the flying head. I hope you found it both entertaining and interesting. And if you did, please subscribe, like, maybe leave a comment down below. Thank you for your company, my friend. And I hope to sit with you again very soon.